Hey folks, it's Dave here from DM Online and ScreenFlow 10 has just been released. Um, snapped it up yesterday. I've been a huge fan of ScreenFlow for probably about 10 years. So slightly apt that this is ScreenFlow 10 now. Anyway, um, if you're uh, currently a ScreenFlow user, they've probably got in touch and you've maybe had a look. Um, you'll probably see how fabulous this new update is. It's one of the most... Um, one of the biggest upgrades I've seen for a long time. Uh, it's more than just a couple of little tweaks. There's some really pretty amazing stuff in there. So without any further ado, let's uh, jump in and have a look at it uh, in action. So this is what we're faced with when we go in. First of all, um, we have the permissions section, which is new, and that basically allows you to enable, uh, you have to do all this on, on the current Mac version anyway, allow basically ScreenFlow to use all these different components. And then you have the usual new recording, new document, new from template, which is new, recent documents and stock media library, if that's uh, something you've invested in, that's a, an extra monthly cost. So if we go into the recording window, we've now got quite a few options to add all sorts of different cameras. Um, obviously you can use your built-in uh, display for recording your screen, but you also have op options for using, obviously there's the built-in laptop camera, your FaceTime camera, but you can add in all of these drop downs, extra microphones, extra sources, extra cameras, whatever you have. Um, I've just added my iPhone um, yesterday to this. Don't have it plugged in at the moment, but that's the new interface for recording. Okay, so if we go into the video editing part of ScreenFlow, the new ScreenFlow, we can see now that we've got um, probably quite a lot more preset um, resolutions and screen sizes and so on, formats um, from 4K all the way down to various iPhone settings from 7 Plus up to X, you've got iPad landscape, IGDV, uh, Instagram TV and Instagram. So you can do that instantly now from within the editor. Also because you can now add different cameras there are more uh, frame rate options. So in the actual editor window itself um, there are quite a few different changes. It's a slightly nicer looking layout I think. Um, there are a few additions I've recorded. I've just nipped next door in my studio and just did a little video on the phone, which I'll explain in a moment, just to show off a couple of the, the new features that come with ScreenFlow 10. But um, one of the things to notice is there are now um, these little icons in the timeline, which I kind of don't think were there before, um, where you can, a bit like Photoshop actually, you can um, close, uh, conceal, hide layers or, or reveal them, and you can also just um, mute the audio right on the timeline, which I'm pretty sure you couldn't do before. You had to go up to, um, you know, audio and mute it from there, which I'm sure you still can do, yeah, mute audio. But these are just um, quite good um, little shortcuts. So, um, onwards. Some of the new features in here are accessible from this little shortcut tab up here. You can add a text box from here. Again, you can still do it from the old place in the menu here, but you can just go up to these shortcuts. And one of the newest features they've got now are animated titles, um, which it, ScreenFlow 10 comes with a range of those. And here they are here. They're actually quite nice and fully customizable. So um, if we just pick one, if you hover over them, it gives you a little preview of what they look like. Quite nice little animated headlines and subtitles, you know, various... Um, lower thirds, that kind of thing, really pretty handy stuff. Which um, I've got, uh, I've got videos. So I usually, when I've been using this kind of thing, I've gone to videos and had to create that and download it separately and add it in. I, I'll be kind of shortcutting that by using a lot of these from now on for some of my videos because I kind of like them. Um, so if we just pick one and um, let's have a look at it. Uh, well, let's go with this. Looks nice. So if I, I select that, I can then change the font, uh, usual bunch of um, font selections that are in there, uh, and I can do that for the title, the headline, and the subtitle, and I can change all the colors as I see fit. But uh, I'll stick with this for the moment just to let you see it. So we can just add that now, and you'll see it adds in on a separate layer. And if we just play, we can watch that coming in. Really um, bad choice for this one because it completely covered the video but you get the idea. So those are kind of cool. You can um, grab those. Let's just delete that for the moment so we can go on to the other features. Um, there's also, 
there are bunches of templates that are now available. Um, I'm not actually sure where these are available from, but they're in. I'm going to give you a link at the end of this where you can look at the full um, Telestream review of this and all their videos and, and all their features. But this is really just to give you a quick overview. So you can, uh, there's a lot of different templates that you can um, get from third parties, presumably through Telestream, um, like their photo and video clip library, which is a, an additional monthly cost if that's something you want to go with. But um, those are quite nice, just little shortcuts that have been added. Okay, so if we now go to, if you select something in your timeline that you want to add something to, an effect or a filter, um, these are under filters and effects now. Um, if you just hit plus, the menu opens for those. So again, you get little previews of, I guess these are kind of um, Instagram type filters, um, just various color effects, presets that you can just kind of add in. There is also an automatic chroma key, um, which is kind of okay, depending on, on where you're at. Let's have a quick look at that. Uh, automatic, I'm gonna add that on to the first part of the video, which what I did was I sat in my um, little studio room and just, I've got a green wall in there, but I, I and three non-green walls. So I started just to see what this automatic background removal would be like on the non-green wall. As, it, as you can see, it's a little bit patchy, but if we move on to the green screen wall, um, again, bit weird. Um, not too convinced by that, I have to say. Um, there doesn't even seem to be really an amount that works here. That's really just for the other effect, which is quite good, which is a blur effect. So if I go back and rather than um, automatic background removal, I select blur. You can see it does quite a nice background blur, which you can vary the amount of. I actually do quite like that effect. That's really quite nice. Gives you a kind of bulky blur kind of effect. So not bad. Um, other than that, the effects and so on are, as you can see, they've just, rather than giving you a kind of menu as per the old old system, um, you can just go in and collect, select them from little preview windows and then you've got the controls here. And you've got, um, some of them have controls, some don't, and it's thermal, you can just remove that or add it as you want. So that's the, the main kind of change really in the filters and effects side of things. The Another feature that's been added um, is you can now instantly upload those to more sources than before. I know you could do um, YouTube and Vimeo, Vimeo and so on before, but you now have Vimeo, YouTube, Google Drive, Dropbox, Wistia, and Box, Imgur, and then obviously just the, the standard export, all from here rather than going to the file menu, which you can obviously also do. But um, just a couple of kind of quite nice shortcuts. So all in all, I think quite a good upgrade. Um, it is a paid upgrade if you have ScreenFlow 9, it's 49 bucks. Uh, and if you don't, if this is your first venture into ScreenFlow, I'd say it's a pretty good one to start with. Um, and that's 149 bucks. Um, I'm gonna give you a link in the description here. You can go and check out um, Telestream's own review page and they've got um, some really detailed videos on all these different features in more detail than I've gone into. But just to give you a bit of an overview, um, I kind of think it's really good. So um, I hope you found this useful. If so, do feel free to subscribe, leave me your comments, and um, I'll see you soon. Bye for now.